I want us to look at light as the civilization of light and darkness. When I talk about the civilization of light and darkness, I talk about the systems that regulate light and darkness. Light and darkness are two systemic civilizations. They don't agree at all. At all, at all. If you read, if you read, um, if you read and look at your life in general context, like read your life, look at in general context, discover there's a two war going on inside of you. It's a war of light and darkness. One wants you to align to a pattern of darkness, one wants you to align to a pattern of light. That's what you call flesh and the spirit, not it. Or you call it God and devil. You get what I'm saying now? So there is just this kind of war inside of you, of good and bad. You know, somehow a part of you wants to do something that is not totally light. Another part of you will just want to align to darkness. And the problem is the neutral pattern is just darkness. What I mean by neutral? You know what I mean by neutral? Like I know they do anything. <laughs> In our darkness, what they do? Do you know what I'm saying now? Darkness, like I told you, darkness come uninvited. You must be intentional to bring in light. Do you understand now? So anywhere there is no light, darkness will be just be there. Darkness don't need to be invited. There is no any special mechanism to bring it. As long as do you know that? Um, I was trying to explain something about geography, but forget about them. How the how you see night and darkness come about? I get what I'm saying. To let you understand the position and the rotation that makes the darkness to be the way it is, and when it shift, it makes light to be the way it is. Because the sun is always shining. Is that not true? It's the moon that doesn't have light. Right? So when the moon positions itself and covers the light that comes from the sun to the earth, you now see darkness. Tell us that now. So you say it's night. Actually, it's not night. Because night can be in the night. Night can be in the day. But you don't understand. That's why we have eclipse now. The day eclipse happened in the very afternoon. We were there one day when the eclipse happened. We are in afternoon like this. Suddenly, night came. And we check our clock. It's not 12. I now discovered that this clock too. <laughs> it's not automatically right all the time. Because, of course, all of a sudden. So what Joshua did was simple. He moved the moon. You know something now? He moved the moon. Because night came. Joshua was the one that took a day out of February. Remember that? To Joshua. He took a day out of February. He said, from today, there will be no day in February. February can either be 28 or 29. And they can never change it. I studied, I discovered that long time in history, there was a time when something like that happened. To amaze me. I said, wow, because astrologers and astronomers, they gaze to find out how the changes happen. Say somebody from the earth, they don't know how he did it. He shifted the moon. The moon has already covered. I get what I'm saying now. For it to be night. But Joshua knew that at night time, the war, will be, they would defeat them. So he shifted the moon again so that the sun can shine. And the sun shine. And the day was taken out. Say today, February can either be 28 or 29. So if you are born on 20, 29 of this month, I don't know. <laughs> next year, I don't know. You don't have a birthday. <laughs> you, have to, you don't have a birthday. You got next year. You'll be 28. Ah, you, you, you will not have birthday to celebrate for you. That's why you hardly people that are born within those kind of times. Like you know what I'm saying. So it's a civilization. Okay. I realized that um, Job, in the book of Job 3, from 1, when the predicament of Job came upon his life heavily, Job caused the day he was born. Job was one of the first persons that actually truly caused the day he was born. It was simply because there was a civilization that came upon him. There was a system stronger. Job was a man that walked by light. The Bible called him the wisest man. Every wise man is a man of light. Pluto, Socrates, they have some level of revelation, insight and revelation. That's why they are quotes. Some of their quotes are very, very moral. There is one that his name is Confucius. His quotes are very good. But let me tell you, those quotes, they may be good, but they are not divine. Job had some light. In fact, a lot of light. But the Bible speaks about how he walked by light. In the days of his youth, somehow there was the candle lampstand of the Lord that illuminated his path. And people see him and they bow. The reason why people bow to us today, bow to you, is because of the light and revelation you have. You must say after I did something, they say, SBI, SBI. It's light. The difference between him and those people is not the light he has. Maybe the strength and energy of fire. I'm telling you. So you do this small thing and the woman, the lady was okay. You see it now. It's the light. So now they begin to bow. That's what happened to Job. Everybody was bowing down to Job. You see the young men see me from the gate, they bow. Elders see me, they salute. That's our lives now. 
one day a predicament came before him the civilization of darkness came after him and suddenly every glory of job was taken away job was like dangote in fact richard and dangote maybe sultan of brunei can you make that man poor Obana? somebody that make per second he make about 200 dollars per second how can you make that kind of person poor That's, how can you make that kind of person poor if you want to make them go to port, it's going to take a lot of work. Do you know why? Because how would you want to start? But when they involve the world, I told you something now. The element of nature that have latent power, the consolation, they can make that possible. That was what came after Job. You know, God gave the devil his life, but he didn't give him this proprietary to take his own soul. So he allowed the devil to do anything you want to do with him. He thought... He never knew that devil knows the element of creation. So that was how, of course, they involve the stone, the stars, everything that look like element that have power that they don't want to use it. Those pestilence and arrows they engage in, they channel it towards Job. And overnight, Job children were just they were just driving cars and doing it for speed. Maybe they are driving some of those Lamborghini, and stars fell from the sky and hit each and every one at the same time, and all of these, them died. Ah. Just like that, all these K2 stars fell from the sky and killed all of them again. You know, there are more stars than human beings. You know that? They fell upon all the children and killed all of them at the same time. They fell upon his business, crashed the stock market, crashed everything. You know, you need stars to do that. You need, you need beings that are celestial to do that. And all of them crashed everything. In one day, news were just coming. He was just receiving news everywhere. That, Baba, this is what is going on in your life, oh. And in that frustration, food to finish at home. The food that was there disappeared. I mean, it was terrible. And the only thing that the devil left was his wife. You know, that one is the dead, do you bad? They did that swearing very well. <laughs> and the wife was telling him, curse God and die. The man refused. Yeah, why didn't she curse God and die? Also partake in that children, those children, <laughs> deceiving him. Paul <laughs> well, is angry. Please don't tell your husband to God God and die, please. <laughs> you see, Job said, even though he slay me, yet will I praise him. But what happened to him was a civilization of darkness. And suddenly, a great man that everybody bowed to. Now, people see him. And they say, What can in fact even dogs are more better than him? Why? Because the devil didn't leave him like that though. He didn't leave him as poor. He put one terrible disease upon him. And sauce. They say sauce was coming out of his body. And worms. Do you know that kind of smell? How can a great man that everybody is about to now smell and worm? Even you know how to stay with him again. There's no greatness in this one. No wisdom there. <laughs> then the wise men from the north, the south, and the west. Now came to see him to diagnose the situation. What's their name again? Is it Zofa Builder and who? Ellie was a boy. Ellie is not this, it's the boy, it's like the PA of one of the wise men. There is Zofa, there is Builder, there is uh, eh? or something. But that's not my emphasis anyway. But three, the other wise men came to diagnose the situation. The Bible said they came for how many weeks? Seven, seven, seven days. For seven days, it's just one week. They came and just sat down. And they were just watching. What kind of that's I wish that's a picture of the way Job is, you know. What kind of sick they have never seen that kind of sickness at all in their life before. So they are trying to still observe him for seven days. What is really what did this man truly what is really this sickness? Since they could not understand. You know. They now decide that Kai, Job must have done something very terrible for God to decide to punish him like this. His own punishment is special. God wants to reveal a new punishment upon the face of the earth to him. They could have just, maybe Corona. <laughs> they could have just kept quiet. But you know, they began to afflict him again with words. With words. They begin to blame him and talk all kinds of things. And all of them, none of them could give him consolation. All of them. And they were wise men. 
terrible. And that's when later, was it Elihu now that God now preached upon Elihu? He said, well, when wise men were talking, I felt I should keep quiet because I told that old age, you know, his utterances was that of an apostle. It was too sweet. He said he felt as though wisdom should be with white men and with gray hair. We never knew that actually. <laughs> Sometimes those white and old age does not define wisdom. So there's a spirit in a man and the inspiration of the Almighty gave him understanding. He was talking about the realm of light. So while I was, while we were talking, there was, my spirit was filled with new wine. And I just had to give it a trust. And I began to let Job to understand what was going on in the life of Job. How this is what was going on. And afterward, Job received a little bit of consolation. Then God began to come and ask Job question. When God, God began to ask Job question. Job could no longer answer the question. Because anytime God asks a question, he can never answer. And that was the time I was asking God, yeah! When God answered, I just kept quiet. I said, I asking for mercy. Have God ever answered you before? <laughs> oh my God. He answered you with a rebuke. A rebuke in love. So it was a strong civilization, actually, that came after him, okay? But at the tail end, the Bible let us understand that at the tail end, Job was seen and everything was restored. I mean, Job become times what? Times two more well than the way it is. And that's what God does to a man that aligned to light for a very long time. Okay. So, but within that time, that Job three, Job began to cause the day he was born. He began to cause the day and make it become light. In fact, he was wishing that he died before he was born. Why? Because when darkness comes after you, sometimes you feel as though there is no value for light. And when light comes, darkness vanishes away. When light came, his life was restored. Okay. And I let you understand that you can be walking in light, yeah, you are even in the night time. And you, and you can be walking in darkness even if you are in the daytime. Okay. The Bible is speaking about um, in the book of 1 John 1 5 to let us understand that there is such a civilization as light and there is that of darkness. And we that choose to walk in light, we that accept Christ, we must understand that we are supposed to walk by light, not by darkness. We speak about darkness, we speak about everything that looks like the devil. We speak about light, we speak about everything that looks like God because the character and the nature of God is light. Okay? Everything that looks like God is light. Everything that looks like the devil is darkness. Everything that looks evil, everything that is good for God is a good God, devil is a bad devil. There is no any revelation in it. So everything that looks good is God. Everything that looks bad is the devil. So darkness will ensure that you become very bad. That the money you have, use it to do all kinds of bad things. You know, sometimes we always say that God leave people in their poverty so that they can be humble. If God give you 10 billion naira today, you may never be humble at all. In fact, you may want to kill everybody. I get what I'm saying now. I told someone, I said, if God give you power, let's say God just choose one day and empower you. And make you to be able to turn people, turn people to chicken and cat. And when Paul stands, say, pray, 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 you don't look at him. You don't like this. Paul will become a chicken. <laughs> when it's four o'clock, you bring him, you get to a cat. <laughs> so when God gives you power, maybe you may miss it. So God will leave it away because the darkness in your heart is terrible. That's sometimes you are praying out fast night. Father, give me this. Father, give me. God will keep you the way you are because you know the kind of darkness you become. Maybe you become like that prophet. <laughs> so you must be able to understand that the reason why sometimes God leaves us the way you are is because. There are a lot of darkness in our heart. I get what I'm saying now. You may not be able to know what you do. I'm telling you until you're in a certain situation. Okay. Whether you like it or not, the earth is ruled by two kingdoms. The kingdom of the devil and the kingdom of God. And sometimes referred to as Babylon and what? Zion. It's referred to as um, light and darkness. It's referred to as good as bad. You know? And all of them seek one thing. Number one is to colonize us. Light want to dominate us. Darkness want to subdue us. And that's why you must always understand that the reason why we have spiritual warfare is because light and darkness are clashing. That's why no matter how you do, you will always keep having spiritual warfare. Because you are light, darkness will not like you. They will keep clashing with you. And the only way is for you to continue to advance, conquering them again and again. Okay? So that's why Paul said, well, that's not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers and all of those. 
I need to understand that Satan works by men, God works by men. Okay? Men are the vehicle where with God walk upon the face of the earth. Men are also the vehicle where darkness gives expression upon the face of the earth. Okay? And, um, like I said, both of these kingdoms seek to what influence us, control us, and dominate us. And if we, must have, have to, have to, if we need to really understand the system of how this thing works, is this. Darkness has its governors. Like, darkness has its governors. It has men and women that govern us. Men and women that give executive orders and commit to darkness. Darkness also has its own representative. Darkness has its own priest, and they do their own priesthood. They also do their own legislations. I learned about what um, the president of the U.S. just came and did. He's just did it. Immediately when he became president, he, in fact, everything that uh, Donald Trump did, he then came and canceled them one day. One day. That one is really a governor. He's an executive. He's an executive of darkness. So darkness have executive. One man. You may not be able to see darkness, but as a civilization, it can walk through a man. You can become the president of Nigeria today and decide that in Nigeria today, every day, every day, 200 virgins must be killed. And it will be done because you are a president. So the guy wake up one day and say all the laws that Donald Trump have put, they should move all of them. That there will be that free abortion, that what again? Gay, 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 you marry a woman, you marry a man. If you want to marry a dog, marry a dog, marry a good, marry a good. Does that one look like light? Does that look like Jesus Christ? That's purely Babylonian system and darkness. Even Babylon was not worse like that. The Babylon we shot every day. Five even Sodom and Gomorrah, somebody say, Sodom and Gomorrah, eh? they have tried. Because in this world right now that we are living, it has gone beyond what they are thinking. So darkness has its governors. It also has its what? Representative. And those representatives are the people that, of course, the carry it and still go on. And also have its own priests. There are priests that actually are gays too. It has its own priests too. They also establish their own laws. You get it now. But we must understand that light also has its governors too. There are governors of light. Donald Trump is actually a governor of light. And we trust God that God will raise for us more governors of light that will establish new laws and ensure that we as representatives of light also we carry out the priesthood and also legislate and also change the laws okay you must also be able to understand that in the realms of the systemic operations of light and darkness there are demons and there are angels in demonic ranking in angelic ranking all of them are categorized according to principality there are principalities angels there are principalities demons whether you like it or not okay and there are thrones angels, there are thrones demons. I get what I'm saying now. So when you look at the civilization of light and darkness, they find expression through sin, sins, and iniquity. Okay? In sin is what darkness does to ensure that a man meets the mark of God. A man does not align to the oppressions of God. Anytime you sin, you align to darkness. But sins is when the sin has now become a culture and a tradition. Just like in the US now, it's not a sin for you to actually marry a woman. So that has now become a sin. You call it sins because, you see, it has become a civilization. It has become a norm in the society. Why iniquity is when darkness executes its influence strongly upon a man and control. That it makes the man to continually, perpetually fall again and again to sin. It becomes iniquity. So by these three gateways... We discover that darkness continually to find expression. And sometimes, of course, men transgress, but transgression, I don't think, is that as powerful as sin, sins, and iniquity. Okay? So you must understand that in their ranking, thrones, thrones demons, principalities demons, also continue to find expression in the lives of men and bringing men to conformity to darkness. Why thrones angels, principalities angels, and the representative do their best to educate men in light, to make men to choose the pattern of light on culture based so that God can be able to also be advanced. It is our responsibility to fight and ensure that we sustain and maintain the order of God upon the face of the earth. Freedom to us will never be given. What I mean by that is that they will never grant unto us freedom. No matter how we do, we will never be free. They will never grant. There is never going to come a day where darkness will decide not to actually control a man. It's a lie. No matter how you do. You know, darkness will always, it will always find a way 
to control you. That's why no matter how spiritual you are, tongue talking a believer, devil don't care. He will still come there. I get what I'm saying now. And that's why you see all kinds of things happening to ministers. As powerful as they are, you see, see some level of darkness and wonder and he's anointed. No, it's not that and he's anointed, it's a civilization. It's a strong influence that comes upon them. Sometimes it's beyond them. And that's why it's the same thing with you too. Tell yourself the truth. There is a warfare inside of you. There are days you feel as though Kai. I mean, you just feel as though this God is just this. Sometimes you don't know why. I don't know. I was telling somebody, I say, see, the flesh do so many, so many signs and wonders. You know, I thought only the spirit do signs and wonders. Never the flesh does. I'm telling you. While I look at my life, sometimes I discover that anytime I dare to walk in the flesh, I do signs and wonders. I imagine myself. Is it me that do this thing? Oh, thou anointed man. Why? Because the flesh too can do many wonders. It will amaze you what you do in the flesh. It will surprise you. As powerful as you are like this, the things you can do in the flesh are terrible. So you must always learn to understand that your strength is how much more you are aligned to light. Always you must choose light on daily basis. The Bible says, I've said before you what? Light and darkness. I said before you, life and what? You are to choose one. Light will lead you to life. The Bible says, indeed, is the fountain of light. In the light, we find, we see light. Darkness will lead to what? Dead, no matter how you do. So you must continually, consciously choose light and not choose darkness. Because that war will never end. It will never end. In fact, the more you rise, the more you encounter darkness, the more. I'm telling you the truth. The more you encounter. Do you know I'm tempted every day? You people, I, you people get tempted maybe once in three weeks. Me, I get tempted almost every day. I'm telling you the truth. Tempted in all kinds of things. It's terrible. Do you understand now? Because you see, when you go to the top, when you're on the top, you discover that you have many privileges. Like a lot of privileges. I'm telling you. A lot of privileges. If you like money, they will tempt you with money. If you like uh, women, they will tempt you with women. If you like men, they will tempt you with men. If you like um, what again? power, oh. influence, anything. You you want fame, you want they will give it to you. They will tempt you with anything that looks like it. I get what I'm saying now. But anything that darkness gives, you take it back again with interest. So you must be able to be careful. Okay. Then um, they must understand that when it comes to the systems and the civilization of darkness and light, is what introduces what I call warfare, spiritual warfare. Okay, because warfare is basically light trying to conquer darkness or darkness trying to conquer light. That's what results to warfare. All the encounters, dreams you're having, fighting and whatever you're having, is just light and darkness clashing. Okay, so. But there are a few things that actually strengthen you in warfare. In warfare, you need what I call the purity of heart. When a man subscribes to light, he must be pure at heart at all times. You must sustain integrity. You must be a man of truth, a man of the word. You must be a man of the Holy Spirit. You must know the Holy Spirit. And you must make him to become your tour guide. If not, at every time, darkness will actually subdue you. What I mean by that, if the Holy Spirit is not leading your life, I'm assuring you, the civilization of darkness will capture you one day. One day they will capture you. And even if they capture you for two minutes, you will do many wonders. You will never imagine. Do you know that David was a man after God's own heart? Have you reached that rank before? That you become a man after God's own heart. But look at what a man after God's own heart did. That's what you can do. That's the wonders and the signs you can do without the Holy Ghost in two minutes in your life. Do you understand that? Of course. No, they are, they, I think the theologian was the one that they excavated. They discovered that David actually, that uh, what's her name again? Bathsheba was his uh, former girlfriend, right? And so, of course, I don't know why her house is close to his own house. And he's a king. Kings live in about three, four story building. She is in one, one building. When he's up there, she's bathing down, you'll see her. And he refused to close his eyes. As powerful as Job is, Job has made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look. Sometimes I have myself. Last I travel to Abuja, Lagos, all these civilized cities, you will see things. You will see visions in the daytime and in the nighttime. You must learn to refuse to see vision. When you want to see, you must refuse not to see. Sometimes you must deviate your eyes from the things that will, that will, that will, that will colonize your soul and your spirit. You only really believe you are strong. But I'm trying to be careful of the things I see, the things I hear, and the things I watch. It's very important. 
It's a covenant you make with your eyes because the systems of Babylon, they have, they have an enticing way of colonizing us. I get what I'm saying now. So, I realized that as powerful as David was, look at what he did. Look at what he did. So that's to let you understand that any man, any man, it's possible for you to walk in darkness. It's possible. And let me, darkness will borrow you. It's the Babylonian system. How that they bore a lot of people to take advantage of them after they are done with them, they throw them away. That's why devil will use people every day. God partner with people, devil use people. You see them, all these uh, celebrities and whatever, they sold their soul to the devil. They are publicly saying that, don't worry, they should keep saying it. One day, that's what they call the day of reckoning. Devil will demand a price they cannot pay. At that time, they will be gone. And it may be too late because they work as governors of darkness. Okay? So, there are things that also weakens you. I speak about things that strengthen you. But there are things that also weakens you. Number one is sin. Any man that wants to ensure that he does not align to the civilization of darkness must do his best to avoid sin. Let it not be a challenge. Try. But eventually you sin, repent fast. So that darkness will not come and lay hold of you. The Bible speaking says the thief cometh and finding nothing of his own in me. That the devil did not spare Jesus. He came to Jesus again to check, is there something of my own there? He now came and didn't find. When Joshua was shown, when, was, was it Joshua, Joshua that was, that was, uh, a vision was shown of Joshua and the accuser was accusing him. He said, is this not a branch plucked out of fire? The same thing. God killed Moses. The devil is coming to claim the body. That's how terrible it's darkness. I told darkness will always come unannounced. It will just come. You never, in fact, you never desire it. You know, I feel something before you start thinking bad thinking. Like you are just maybe you're even praying, you know, and bad thought just start coming kind anywhere. You see, that was no you. That's darkness. It always come unannounced. You don't announce it to come. If it doesn't beg you, it's what we call unwanted guest. I'm telling you. You said this speaking. Just like that. I don't want to tell some stories. I'm going to see your prayer meeting. See your prayer meeting. I don't know what informed some people's mind before you know, they started in. I'm telling you. Darkness informed you to begin to do touch, 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 and we're doing prayer. How come did you. They were doing counseling. NCCF. Counseling in the what they call it? Counseling in a, in office. You came, somebody came. You are ESCO doing counseling, and suddenly darkness tell you to counsel differently. Thought patterns come. This and this and this one before you know it. You blow. They cast their eyes and they blow the trumpet in Zion. They will let you. What I need to darkness will come uninvited. You will not invite it. It will just come like that. I get what I'm saying now. And sometimes when you stay, you are trying to pray, you are trying to study darkness, you say, hey, come on, wake up, stand up, go and masturbate. Stand up, do this. Stand up, do this. Stand up, watch pornography. Enter the site. Do this. That's how the thing works. So you must be able to choose light intentionally. Say, I must do this. Because darkness will always come after you. No matter how powerful you are. Say, beat your wife. Slap your wife. Insult her. In fact, fight with this person. It's darkness. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there are days that you kill somebody. Is that worse? Okay, you must decide and say, I will walk by light. I will walk by light. Because anytime you walk in darkness, sincerely speaking, you are going to cause a lot of trouble. So sin weakens your potency. Iniquity also, and carnal living, wayward living. Some people don't care. Today you are in church, next tomorrow you are in party. For seven days you are in party, one day you are in the church. I mean, your civilization is after you. That's why you find yourself putting trousers like whiskey and uh, acting like the bunch, acting like uh, the Jay-Z, acting like Beyonce. All of those things are darkness. I'm telling you, it's their civilization. You don't know. As you listen to them, you're just hearing baby, 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 baby. You're in church, you're singing baby, baby. There was a guy they gave him to sing one morning. <laughs> the guy listening to many kind of songs. I'm telling you, the guy was singing, Holy Spirit, we love you, Holy Boy. In the spirit, there is no that substance of that Holy Spirit. 
before you know the guy just busted the kukere, kukere. Oh, hi, Ale, Ale, good day. And I remember it's in church. It's a civilization that has colonized him. You get what I'm saying now? I tell you. And that's why sometimes you don't even know when you're even just singing the songs. I'm telling you, you are just at home and you just start singing. Give me one of these songs now. You don't make me fall in love. You know? Madness. One corner, one corner, one corner, one corner. It's a civilization that everybody in the whole of Nigeria, even abroad, they are one corner, one corner, one corner, one corner. Naramali, I learned that Naramali now. Everybody is Naramali now. What's the name of that? They are song against it. Best of best of what's it? Peshimole. There's one that, that came that time. People would just I'm gonna go out and then bag that people now see that they will not start again. I'm gonna go out and gaga. This is civilization. You are colonized, you don't understand. You are you are slaves. You need to be free. I'm telling you. You need to be free. We are totally look at our church. Carnal things is what they are brought and for the copy and giving to us. Why can't Christians bring dance? Must we always copy the one that our bring? Shaku, shaku, shaku. Say, you know, see, people are even doing it. They are even not at all. You know, I. What, what go outside? Like, can't. Ha, I don't know that one again. No, we must be careful. I'm telling you, because we are being colonized. I'm telling you. And it's because of the colonization of darkness that makes marriages not to work, relationships not to work, because everything the lady is thinking is what she saw from a uh, heart from all these her friends. And her friends, you know who are mentoring them? Telemundo, Big Brother Africa, and all of those rubbish. So they come, they try to do it to you what is happening there. And you, when you refuse, or when you are not aligning to that, they say you are not spiritual. Or they will tell you, they will tell you, you are too, is it too spiritual? They are not romantic. What is the definition of romantic? Now, I don't know their love language. Can't your love language be prayers? <laughs> yeah? Can't your love language be prayers? Must your love language be all those uh, psychological things? It's a civilization. It's after your life. I'm telling you. And one of the easiest ways to check how much, the last thing I'll say, how much the strength of the civilization of darkness. Okay, sorry. The things that weakens you, I talk about carnal living, disobedience, dishonor to God. Dishonor to men and dishonor to principle. Also, your ignorance and your prayerlessness. Many people are afraid to challenge principality and power. I mean, I'm not afraid to any place I go to challenge the principality and power there. Why would I come to a region and I will not be negotiating with the devil? There is Babalao here. Me, I'm here. Choose one. No. Let this one go. Let's test oil. One will go. No problem. If I go, no, no, I'll do. You get it now. So, and as the more you fight in spiritual warfare, the more you gain an advantage. They promote you in the realm of the spirit. And like I always say, spiritual warfare are fought on legal grounds. Only them that understand the legalities will win the warfare. What that means is simple. That the devil will fight you legally. Some of you, because you listen to one corner, one corner, you don't know why you're behaving like one corner. I get what I'm saying now. The devil will fight you in keeping to the legal ground that you have built one corner in your mind. Principalities work by principles. What principle is regulating your life? Is it the word of God? Is it one corner? Is it Naramali? Many people start smoking because they're watching all these guys smoking. Many start drinking. All the things you see people do is because of what they are seeing people doing. So we must be able to be careful. Is that right now? So, um, lastly, what tests your level of alignment to light or darkness is basically what is found in Galatians 5. 19. We're just going to look at this and that song. We'll just read it. The fruit of the spirit and the works of the flesh takes your level of alignment to light or darkness. What I don't do is simple. I check my life to see where am I defaultive? You know the basic Ten Commandments. How many of you don't know the Ten Commandments? The basic Ten Commandments. Don't say the other one is Old Testament. You have grace. Fulfill it. You know what I'm saying now. Don't break it. If you break it, it means you've had, you have not even left the Old Testament. We have left it where in the New Testament we are seeing the Old. Because you must fulfill the 
10 commandments for you to enter the new commandment. You don't understand what I'm saying now. So what I mean by that is simple. Check your life. When was the last time you break the 10 commandments? Do you have to think, have I broken the 10 commandments? If you have, darkness has borrowed part of you. Then, you move forward in the new commandment to look at the works of the flesh, which is the, which is, um, the ones that are manifested, and the fruit of the spirit. If you are aligned to light, you will discover the fruit of the spirit at work in your life. If you are aligned to darkness, you discover the works of the flesh at work in your life. So what I do is that I check my life vis-a-vis -vis the fruit of the spirit and the works of the flesh. Which one do which one do I need to correct? And you see, it will amaze you to discover that eh, your flesh can do signs and wonders. Some of them are found in you. So you must intentionally, consciously do subtraction. Consciously. You know, it's not something that you... These are why men of God go down. I just read that... I'm just realizing that Al Maldonado, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado and his wife have separated. That they have divorced. So we're just saying a lot of things online and it's, you know, those things are terrible. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. They have separated. But the wife now has another ministry to have another ministry. Very terrible. Powerful man. I have, I have his video almost like 10 geek. Glory. What? The supernatural. There is no church that heralds the supernatural like them. And they have powerful worship team. They are the ones that say, Oh, love. Your love is supernatural. So the truth is this darkness eh, with your light, it will come uninvited to still deal with you. Okay, so let's look at Galatians 5 19 as we close. But we say, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. You see, the Bible call it the works of the flesh. That's say works of the flesh are very hard. It's work, it's something that requires energy for you to do them. Do you understand know that? It requires energy. Any of these works of the flesh require energy. Number one, they say what? Adultery. Do you know you cannot just commit adultery just like that? It's a lie. It requires energy. Adultery means to sleep with somebody's wife. Where will you get somebody's wife that is willing to really sleep with you? How long will it take you to seduce her to, to, to come to that point? Then where will you even do it? Where will you remove your cap, remove your shirt, remove it, all of this one? I'll remove our. So you see, the works of the place require some works, like real work and energy. <laughs> but you see, sometimes darkness supplies grace too. <laughs> have, you been put, have you seen an attraction of darkness before? Things attracting you. There is a force that pulls you into those things. I'm telling you. While I was watching pornography those times, you see, I can finish swelling and put in my new resolution, I will not finish, I will not do it. I will not even know how Bodo Richard card. I still get data and still watch it. It's a force of darkness. There is grace of life. It will push you. It's that force that will push you, you will trek and go to Doma. Just to see a lady you sleep with her and come back and trek and come back again. I will not be tired. Darkness has, they supply their own energy. The same thing that light to supply energy for you. I get what I'm saying now. And it gives you some wisdom to cover it. It's terrible. Look at the way David did. He went through a lot of stress to kill, uh, to get Bathsheba. After he slept with her, he now said, Kai, this one will not pass me by. He now called his uh, generals. He said, Kari, what's his name? Uzziah? Uriah. He said, Kari Uriah, push him to the front of the wall. Let, let, let everybody should retreat and leave him there. Let them kill him there. He has to go through all of this process just so that he can. Darkness has wisdom too. I just read them. You see one adultery, the other one fornication, the other one uncleanness, the other one lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seductions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reviling, and such alike. Okay. The Bible said, Alpha. The which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a challenge. The Bible is speaking, saying, in the last days, Jesus Christ said, Depart away from me. You what? Workers of iniquity. So there are people that might have actually make it, but they will actually check the book of life. 
and they will be charged against their workings. Now these things are compatible with their life. They represented darkness very, very well as a civilization upon the although they choose light, too, but darkness as a civilization has colonized them much more. But now the Bible now went further to give us a solution. He said, But the fruit of the spirit is these are better. This one look more holy. Like they look more nice. We look at the other one. The other one look like demons. This one, fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Say against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lust. Say if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. What I'm trying to let us understand is a civilization of darkness and light seeking to colonize us. One of the easiest ways for you to ensure that you subscribe to light and darkness to consciously, to light, sorry, is to consciously align yourself to this pattern. Check your life. How much of love? How much of joy? How much of peace? How much do you suffer long for God? How much of these characteristics and patterns of the spirit are at work in your life? Then check those works of the flesh very well. How many of them are at work in your life? Deal with them. Don't say it doesn't matter. It will matter at the tail end. Deal with them because it will lead you to many signs and wonders. It will amaze you what it can make you do. It will make it will make it will disgrace you bastardly well. I'm telling the truth. One day it will disgrace you. I'm telling you. I remember a man we invited for a meeting in Zaria. That man came and began to chat all the ladies in the ministry. I'm telling you. In fact, he was even the man who wanted to come and meet him in the hotel. You see, since from that time, we found out we never invited him again. Why? Because his level of darkness, he refused to deal with this. And now he went to a place and disgraced himself. Because you see, not every lady has darkness in her. There are some that will refuse you. And they will, the worst part that they will tell the whole world. Do you know what I'm saying? And you will not be disgraced. That's why you see scandals and everything come out from different. As I'm talking to you right now, there's a man that wants to begin a, a convent. And they're investigating because he's a father. And this father, they learned that he's willing to rule many ladies. And now he wants to start a convent. You know, a convent is where they train ladies to become sisters. And they are wondering, because I know most of the victims, they have talked with me before. I see some of the ladies have come to tell me how the father has slept with them and all of those things. Father? That's why I say, let every Catholic father marry. They can serve God after they are married. And many of them are doing many signs and wonders in the flesh. And they serve communion. So what I need to understand is now, so there is just some kind of investigation and one of the victims met me and she was telling me how much how much she had been taking advantage of her, all kinds of things and now she wanted to expose the man by force so she went to the headquarters in lagos they called some priests from different countries to come and they are investigating him and they need ladies to testify against the man and when they testify of course the man will go to jail and after he go to jail of course the vision for the convert is cancelled and it's going to tarnish the name of ministers the name of the body of Christ, the name of Catholic, and all kinds of things. So one day, you know, so one day you meet Delilah, and Delilah has a dress exposed. Then Suleiman preached a message, he said, uh, be careful of spiritual barbers and their babbing salon. That Delilah, <laughs> Delilah is a, Delilah is a barber, and she has a babbing salon. Any great man that go there, <laughs> she shave his head. <laughs> so can we pray, can we pray in one minute? And as the Lord has said, Father, I will not be aligned to the civilization of darkness. I will walk by the supernatural mystery of light. I started by light and its mysterious mystery. How you are light, how God is light. But I also let you understand there is also darkness. And the civilization upon the face of the earth, light and darkness should never meet. The Bible said there is no association between light and darkness. No, no. In the realm of the spirit, likes attract likes unlike charges will, at, will, will repent like charges what attract in the realm of the spirit so you have no business with darkness many of you have boyfriends that are kind of people today is the day to break up with them many of you have kind of friends all your friends go to party none of them go to church all your friends are drunkards and smokers and you say they are your friends no you have to let them go that's darkness they are luring you all your friends go around going to following men Sleeping around with men and they are your friends. No. Remove all those people on Facebook that will chat you and send you naked pictures. Remove them. You have no business with them. 
It's a civilization of darkness. They want to colonize you. They want to make you a slave so that when you come to pray, pictures will run in your mind. All kinds of things will run in your mind. You feel unworthy to serve the Lord. Father, help us. Let your light lighten our path. Let your light lighten our path in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God. 